Well, I have a really a, a, a real difficult time with um, I think the general business philosophy of genetic engineering and the patenting of seeds. It's like the the corporate business world wants to control the development of agriculture. They want to manage it. They want to extract from it. And that's not what farming is all about. Farming is really about producing food, producing healthy food, creating a healthy environment for us to grow and thrive in. But but genetic engineering doesn't come from that place. They've adopted that philosophy to some degree, but the driving force, unfortunately, I think is really about dominating a business sector. So it's, it's hard for me to accept um, the actions of the, of the companies that are creating genetic engineering as the, the new hope for, for the future, for, um, for society and, and, and food development and, and food source. Um, it just doesn't feel right. Now, one would say, Jesus, well, if the end result is going to be um, good for society, then one should adopt it. I don't think there's any evidence that, that the, the end result is going to be good. I think that there's more concern about the risks that are associated with uh, disrupt, disrupting the genetic makeup of plants that have been part of who we are for so many years and to think that that won't make a difference in, in our environment or potentially in the health of, uh, health of the human race. No, I think the wild part about the patenting is the fact that when you have a, a drift from one ranch in, this, in genetic engineering, if you have a drift from one ranch to another and the seeds on my property now then become contaminated or my plants then become contaminated by the genetic um, drift that, it, that, that starts to show up in my plants. And now I find that I'm in the, in the position where um, one of these large corporations now owns my plants. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, uh, it's unfathomable to think that society would allow for that to, to occur. It's just, it's just mind-boggling. It's, it's, it's at the point of being ridiculous. Uh, f farmers, uh, f farmers don't think that way. They don't operate that way. They're not motivated by that. They're not driven by that. We're, we're really here to, in, for many reasons, farmers are involved in farming for many reasons. Some of it's just a, a lifestyle and some of it's survival. But I think many, many farmers believe strongly that the opportunity they, that they have to contribute to society is in nurturing the, the environment, nurturing the plants, and then... Well, here in Mendocino, I think we have a particular philosophy about our lives, and maybe even more so when it comes to farming, is that what we're, we're trying to do is get closer to the soil, closer to our understanding, of the life forces that exist inside of these surroundings. And the surroundings would be made up of, of the soil, but also the, 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 the air, the water that flows here, the, the wildlife and the animal life. And we feel like the closer that we can get to understanding of how the, how the what the relationship is between the life in the soil and how it um, provides a life energy and a life force to the plant, which then gives us the, the great fruit and expression of fruit. That's the area that we spend a lot of time in. That in of, in of itself is almost antithetical to genetic modification. Genetic modification is trying to re-engineer nature, in a sense. And it's, it, it's so far from the authentic expression, I think the, the emphasis would be on authentic expression, that we're trying to create in not only in our farming, but in the, in the fruits of our labor, which in our particular case is wine. We want to make sure that that's uh, as pure, I think, as you possibly can.